What is going on guys and welcome to another episode of Busted Knuckle Productions. Today we're going to be getting into the wiring harness side of the carb swap that I've done on the Mustang and I've had a bunch of people ask me and you know to go into more detail about how I use the factory gauge cluster and how I use you know the RPM gauge and all that stuff so we're going to be getting into that but first we got to get to the house and get the Mustang. We are pulling up at the house now and oh my goodness whose pretty thing is that? I haven't started this thing up in a while. I hope it cranks. Yeah. Sweet. All right, guys. So we just got in the Mustang and getting ready to go to the shop. And what I'll do, I'll pick the video up once we get there. And we are finally here. For you guys that don't know, uh, how I got my YouTube name is, our shop is called Busted Knuckle Tire and Auto, and that is where I got Busted Knuckle Productions from, so I just figured it was fitting, and it sounded good. Okay guys, so we're in the shop now and I'm going to try to do this step by step to make it as simple as possible and just, you know, try to give the best info I can to you guys. Okay, so the first thing I did uh, was of course wire up the distributor so the car would have fire and it would run. And what I did to get the distributor to fire, hang on, let me get a flashlight. And with a HEI distributor, all you have to do for this to create fire is run a power wire to the battery side of the cap, which is on the right side of this cap or left side, depending on which way you look at it, but it says battery on the top of the cap. And you run that power wire off the fuse panel inside the car under the dash, I would get up under there and film it, but there's no way I could get up under there with a camera and be able to show you exactly what I did. So what I'm gonna do is give you an example of what I did. Okay, so let's say that this box is the fuse panel underneath the dash. All you have to do is take a test light and test light and find a wire that has power on it with the switch on all the, you know, with the switch on has power on it all the time. And so what I did, say this wire was the wire that had power on it coming out of the fuse box. Well, I took my distributor wire, ran it through uh, the, the hole I had drilled in the firewall. I got a little rubber grommet in there so the wires don't get chewed up or nothing. And I took and cut that wire, I spliced it into it, uh, he soldered it back together, heat shrinked it, you know, so it doesn't look retarded or look bad, you know, or come apart. And that goes for the same process for all the wires that I had to run. I just took the wire, I uh, found a, a, uh, wires off the fuse panel that had power with the switch on for each wire that I had to run that needed power. I did, and I did all that for each wire that is that I had to run. I did that for the fuel pump, I did that for the AC compressor, I did it for the alternator, and I think that's it. I think that's all I had to do as far as that goes. Step two, I took and had to have the fuel pump to have power because the fuel pump works off the uh, factory wiring harness and whenever I cut that off, it killed power to the pump. So what I done is I, same, same concept, I ran a power wire off the fuse panel down this, uh, down underneath the carpet all the way back to the fuel pump to the power side of the fuel pump. And the, you can use the factory ground, you just got to splice into the power side of the uh, fuel pump plug-in and it works fine. You, as long as it has power with the switch on, you turn it on, works, runs fine. All 
Okay, so the next step after getting the car to have fire and have fuel was to get my alternator to charge because it doesn't charge with the factory harness cut off. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't charge. I'm going to show you how I fixed it. I took this wire. There's a there's a three prong. I still got the factory harness for the uh, alternator on here. It's just whenever I cut the harness off for the fuel injection and all that stuff, I guess I cut something off I shouldn't have. But how I fixed it is I took the power wire and went to this green wire right here on the three wire plug in on the alternator. I, I ran me a power wire to this, cut, it in, cut and spliced it in with heat shrink, soldered it, all that good stuff. Run it back to the uh, fuse panel, same process. Cut and soldered it into a wire with power on it with the switch on and my alternator charge is fine, have no problems. The next step is to get your fan to work. And you're gonna have to do the same thing, and this requires a little bit of wire and you know wire running, wire tracing, and stuff like that. That's probably the crappiest part of this uh, process is the wiring side of it. But I had to take and run a power wire to my fan, same process, off the fuse panel that has power with the switch on, uh, to my fan, and uh, the ground, the factory ground for the fan wire works fine. Uh, you just gotta test light it out, make sure you find the ground for the fan, and then run a power wire to it, works completely fine. All I did was the same thing, just run the power wire off the fan, back to the fuse panel, now you know, got the wire hidden really good so you can't see all that junk and uh, so it doesn't look bad. Now on to how I got my factory gauges to work. So what I had to do is see if I can get this light to kind of stay in here. I don't know how good you guys can see this, but there's your temperature sensor right there that is for the gauge. And this is the factory sensor, uh, the factory wire. I just found the fact, I just kept the factory wire off the factory wiring harness. And that way the gauge cluster temp gauge would work. Same thing goes for the oil pressure gauge. This wire right here uh, was the factory wire off the factory harness. I ran it down to the, uh, just how it was from the factory, just ran it through this new loom that I had and it makes the old pressure gauge work just fine. The alternator gauge will work how I have it hooked up. As long as you hook it up how I did it, the voltmeter gauge will work and it'll work fine. Okay, now on to how I got my RPM gauge to work. The how I got it to work is I took, and actually let me get out under the hood. There is a tack signal wire that come, that you can uh, get off the uh, side of the distributor cap right here which it says tack right there and all you have to do is run that tack wire uh, into the car to the gauge cluster which I ran through my little wire loom right here and over over into the firewall where I got the hole drilled for all my wires and a little rubber grommet so everything looks nice and doesn't look retarded what I did is I found the tack signal wire which is you know you take the gauge cluster out unplug it and I think it was the seventh pin on the right plug-in for the uh, gauge cluster I found it I found out which wire it was on Google so I mean if you got the internet you can pretty much figure anything out but I took and cut the wire for the factory wire and harness and just pulled it to the side and uh, splice my tack signal wire off the distributor into that wire and my gauge cluster uh, the, temp, uh, the RPM gauge works perfect. I've never I haven't had any issues with it It reads really good. It's real smooth. No problems and y'all seen that in other videos And the fuel gauge will work because you'll keep your stock fuel pump uh, fuel level sensor Wire and harness you don't have to mess with any of that back there just besides running a power wire off the fuse panel to the uh, positive side of the fuel pump harness That's pretty much it for this video guys. That's about the best I can do without you know Of course you being here and me showing you exactly how I done it I figured that would kind of be you know a step-by-step -step of kind of what to do and Like I say guys if you like the video be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel if you'd like but until next time guys We'll see you